Hi, I'm Kirk Short with the Wichita Home Team at Keller Williams Signature Partners, and this is Real Conversations with Kirk. And today I have our mayor, Mr. Whipple. Glad to be here. <laughs> so, no, I, I wanted to have He's a... He's already sold me a house, by the way, so I think it's... it's I think just, you said two. Yeah, this is just a formality, I think, at this point. <laughs> No, I, I wanted to take a real moment and just have a have a fun conversation with you about um, what's going on with the city, um, what it's like uh, effectively being the mayor. You started at, um, boy, the, the, the best time you could ever start. Yeah, how during, long do we have now. on this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a while. Um, it is. So, yeah, just talk to me. How how's this experience been? I mean, you you've been in office now for basically a year, almost a year and a half. Yeah, um, it's long enough to give me a few grays, uh, as my I wife told me. Oh, do you see that? I, I, you, you got I thought she was. You, you didn't get them colored. This is over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, it, you know, it, it, it's been a heck of a year. It feels a little longer than a year and a half or whatever mm -hmm. it has been. But I'll tell you, um, we. The, the weekend before I was sworn in, yeah. uh, we, we all heard that Spirit what was going to have massive layoffs because yeah. the max was grounded. Yeah. Uh, and that is our number one employer here. Yeah. And, and you know I remember coming into this role thinking that we are going into a very strange economic climate yeah. because it wasn't like other recessions where it's almost like low tide where all the, you know, everything's down. Yeah. This was micro-targeted but had also different waves yeah. where uh, you would have the people who are impacted who work at Spirit and then the supply chain and yeah. then the economic ripple effect of folks spending less, less money. Yeah. So I came in really focused on that and I thought for a moment, like my experience up in Topeka, yeah. working as the ranking member of the Commerce, Labor and Economic Development Committee, uh, having access to, at the time, Delia Garcia was the um, Department of Labor mm -hmm. uh, uh, Secretary, having access to her, knowing her personally, uh, having access to the governor, um, getting to meet Dave Tolan, who was the now lieutenant governor, but he was the um, uh, Secretary of uh, of Commerce, uh, yeah. thinking, okay, we're going to get our hands around this, and you know, maybe I'm in the right spot because I have some experience with these folks in Topeka. Yeah. And then as soon as you kind of start getting, I, I guess, um, uh, what is it, your pace? Yeah. With, with that, uh, and utilizing some of the really great resources we have in Wichita, where when I was making calls uh, that first week being mayor, um, trying to link together different services and stuff that we were in need, I found out other people were doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and then we would have like just other groups uh, locally in a nonprofit sector, in the business world. Um, we're also synthesizing different, um, I, I guess, different services that would be needed. So right when we start kind of getting our, our, our pace with that, things start to seem to feel like they're settling down to an extent. Uh, we at least knew what our problem was, so we knew that we could address it. That's when COVID hit. And that was a very interesting situation because there was no blueprint. Yeah. It wasn't like, okay, how is this different than the last economic recession? And the way that COVID, and I, I'm a data person, I, I try to be yeah. database with solutions and, and the way I look at problems, it kind of is that counterweight so that you're not too partisan or yeah. political. It's like, what does the data say? What's the problem yeah. instead of letting ideology drive you? Um, so I try to focus on data it, so I started researching a little bit about COVID and the spread of it, and it was it was almost like a, a weather, uh, almost like a, a weather forecast, right? Yep. Like where you can see the wave and it's coming, it's coming towards you like a storm would. Yeah. Uh, and just knowing that it's kind of it's closing in on us. Yeah. I remember the feeling when we had two cases that were positive here in Wichita, and just the confusion, um, just the um, concern, the fear that people had, and knowing that this is a moment uh, really for Wichita that will be a moment of challenge, one that's uh, above and beyond any economic situation we've been in. Uh, and we, you know, you, you kind of have two choices, and frankly, my sport, uh, and I'm not going to get too much into this, but once my sport I used to do uh, um, competitive taekwondo, competitive kickboxing, 
when you're in a ring, you have two choices. You hit and you win, or you get hit. You yeah. know, uh, So that was our choice, is we actually move forward, we fight this thing, yeah. um, and, and we, we win, or, or we don't make it easy for it to defeat us, or we do nothing, we let it beat us. Right. And that was uh, kind of the attitude going into um, the summer, and then getting, being agile enough as we learn more about this disease, and trying to, you know. Talk about it. Yeah, try to really get, uh, I guess, information out that was accurate, that would help people, even though it was the information people didn't want to hear. Yep. And that was the, I remember one moment when my wife, Chelsea, uh, I woke up and I had some type of realization that this is going to, we have to put our all into this. And I told yeah. her, like, and I call her Han. I'm from New England, yeah. so we call everyone Han. Yeah. Like, I... You but, didn't call me that. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I grew up uh, um, kind of in the back of the bars with my mom. She was a bartender and a yeah. waitress. Uh, so, you know, like, oh, hey, hon. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, so I, I said to Chalice in the morning, just like, uh, uh, hon, we'll probably never be elected again. And just having this kind of, and she looked at me, I remember this conversation where uh, this, this might be it for us, uh, and, and I need us all to be okay with that. Yeah. And the reason why is if we do this right, everyone's going to think that we overreacted. Yep. You know, we didn't have to do it, we're gonna get criticized for that. It, but if we do it wrong, and we'll never get reelected after that, I was gonna think that we just over, overdid this. Yep. But if we do it wrong, the people are going to die. So we're gonna test what leadership means as far as like who power, like power yep. relies on those who, who take, take the lead. So I was yep. going to use all of my, um, influence uh, yeah. to try to do what I thought the science and the experts said was right. Yep. Um, even if some of that stuff was outside the direct power of being mayor, yep. we could use influence and maybe even, God forbid, pressure on some other functions of government to make the right decisions. So uh, you wanted to be a leader? Well, no, I wanted to utilize, leadership is a measurement of influence, not a measurement of authority. So I wanted to be able to utilize what I had at my disposal, yeah. uh, which was really social media, um, to try to influence people who were taking more of a political stance than a medical stance yeah. on this, because I could understand a short-term goal for people who were up for re-election and who valued being re-elected. Yeah. And I had to come to the realization going into this that politics had to be secondary. Yeah. That you know, I had to be willing to no longer ever be reelected if we were to handle this the way we needed to handle it, yeah. which was making tough choices that people didn't want to, I guess, uh, come to the realization that those choices had to be made. You know, shutting things down, um, masking uh, limits on, 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 on folks in, in yeah. uh, certain areas, that type of stuff. And that was, uh, and, and how do I use my influence to get information out, even though it's information people don't want to hear, and also apply, I guess, some of that influence to, you know, to our friends at the county level or our friends at the state level. I call it being honest. I mean, you know, one of the things I really um, appreciate about you coming into office, um, I connected with you before you were in office officially, um, and you were um, very welcoming. I connected with you after you were in office and you had the deluge of all this stuff, um, but nothing changed about you. And as I've seen you in office up until now, um, it's been the same thing, you know, leveraging, you talk about the social media and, um, you know, leveraging that. Um, I enjoyed uh, watching the Facebook lives, you know, having those moments and where people are even asking you tough questions or sending tough questions relative to the messages. And, you know, just being able to address, address things and address people and get the message out. And it's been, um, it's been very welcoming, you know, because this is, this has been a hard time for everybody. Um, I'm curious to ask, you know, you coming in and, and you were talking about, you know, what happened with Boeing. And so it's impact on spirit and all the other different contractors that we have here. Um, you know, I try to find the, sil the silver lining, if you, if you will, in all of this, um, because I think everybody that watches this, um, 
they've been impacted by COVID in some form right. or fashion. They, they either have a direct family member or they've got um, an acquaintance or a family member or acquaintance that's died from this, period. Right. Um, it's horrible. Um, I feel what I see is called the silver lining for Wichita when we've gone through um, aircraft related issues with our companies um, people got up and moved and this didn't happen with this because um, right when the impacts really started happening with Boeing and all of that the whole country was shutting down you know and now we're in even a bigger crisis right now because now it's a supply chain crisis mm -hmm. um, every industry is hurt you know they i'm in real estate they talk about the real estate boom yes there's a boom right now my builders can't get materials right you know i have builders that are jumping out to lowe's and home depot trying to find anything they can to finish projects you know i need meter cans they're out i'm talking to um, my roofing contractor and he said their suppliers are limiting to two colors hmm. wow because they just need to try to make enough that can be used and you know they they had one of the big uh suppliers had made the comment that um if we get a big um hail storm you know through the midwest or whatever the case he goes we will literally be out of shingles we won't be able to produce enough and you know here my roofers like we'll be out of a, a job because not for lack of being able to fix it just that so you know, we thought toilet paper was bad. Right. Right. And that yeah. was like, that was just out of panic. I mean, that yeah. one was less it's, driven by market yeah. uh, and, and weather conditions. That's so interesting. So, so I'm, cu I'm curious from you. Um, I'm depressed now, so I need you to, <laughs> you know, and this is actually really tough times, but it, yeah. It, it is. I mean, and, it, and it's all a trickle down effect, right? Because right. it starts from the bottom. I mean, we have, we have, a, we have what, chicken shortage. We're I mean, shortage of chickens. There's a chicken shortage, you know. Literally, there's a chicken shortage. I, I'm the mayor, which I should have known that. You like, okay, known we that. need to now start yeah, over we, buying we, chickens we, and we're stash gonna have them. A pro, no, we're gonna have a problem getting the spicy chicken from Popeyes. I mean, seriously. I get get my phone. We we have to. <laughs> the uh, the. <laughs> But I mean, Chick-fil-A. No. But to your point, uh, yeah. what's interesting with this, and where where I think you're going with this, yeah. is it's not the situation we're in right now is transformational. Yeah. yeah. Um, it requires, uh, I, I guess, a, a almost a fight or flight or, or s yeah. sink or swim yeah. type attitude with this. Uh, but Wichita, we're in a better spot than a lot, a lot of other cities. So we when, we're, when we talk about it, the economy, and it's really about, it's also a little bit perspective, I think, on, right. um, first off, we, we are a, uh, a city that's used to layoffs yep. uh, and furloughs and, and so on. But that also makes us a city where we look out for one another. Yep. Uh, you know, our our Wichita culture is to look out for our neighbors, to yep. to ask people, um, you know, what what we can do. We have an incredible nonprofit community here, an incredible yep. faith based community. Yep. Uh, we're not judging anyone if they take, uh, you know, if they take advantage of a program that they need. Uh, so we have that culture where we will support each other because we've been through hard times. Yeah. Uh, also, when we talk about, well, the changes in the economy, and some of it's outside of our control. Yeah. Uh, we're in a new world right now. This is a new decade. Uh, we're post-COVID world. We're emerging almost a rebirth. We talk about yeah. in here, we talk about the Wichita Renaissance, right? Yeah. Renaissance means rebirth. Yeah. Uh, but it was a movement back in, you know, back in the 1400s. Uh, so, uh, and, and it changed the world, our, our perspective. We're in that moment now, and we need to think about it as an opportunity, uh, not just because it is, you know, like I said, that sink or swim moment, but the opportunity of what we can do next. Yeah. And I will tell you that the, the Wichita's are scrappy yeah. to the point, like we are not the ones you bet against at the tournament for, for the NCAA. We are not the ones you bet against uh, really, I, I think in general, and I'll tell a quick story about this where but it's a way we perceive things. Where yeah. Spirit had layoffs, yep. we had the um, COVID. Yeah. Uh, Tom, who's the CEO over there, he actually comes from, I guess, the medical field. He got a contract with Bayer to do um, advanced, uh, they look like little backpacks, these advanced, um, uh, what are they, uh, ventilators. 
Because uh, COVID's weird where uh, it affects us differently and a standard ventilator uh, isn't, isn't really uh, sufficient. You need a more computerized, smart ventilator that will know exactly <laughs> how much air uh, to puff into who. Yep. Um, so what we did here in Wichita, Tom gets his contract, he calls the machinists in, he calls uh, the business uh, um, uh, supply chain experts, the lean uh, process experts, uh, he gets WSU Tech yep. to train our, our machinists, uh, and then they just go to work making ventilators. Yep. Now, the interesting thing is we all talk about, well, the contract got pulled, the federal government stopped needing ventilators to restock the supplies, so the contract got pulled, and we go to this narrative of, um, look, we got laid off, look, it's a sad thing. The reality is, when you walk, because I walked with Senator Moran yeah. and, um, and the, the uh, CEO of Bayer and the CEO of Spirit, around their uh, ventilator production shop, yeah. their shop, um, that they threw together because they had to respond in this crisis. And quickly. And quickly. Yeah. And what the story of that is a story we should be telling because it's so witch ten. Yeah. It is, uh, they changed the process. They all learned how to make these machines. They changed the process so that it made more sense using our, our, our knowledge. Yeah. And they went from what the industry standard for that type of ventilator was 50 a week. 50 ventilators a week was the industry standard that they were making over in Japan and they were making down in Florida. And they bumped it to 500 a day. Yeah. 500 ventilators a day. We literally became the ventilator capital of the world, not just the air capital of the world, overnight right. because our people are better than anyone else when it comes to building stuff and when it comes to business process, literally better than the entire industry. Whenever that industry looks towards who did it best, they have to look towards Wichita. We shamed them because we're the best people on it. And that was a matter of weeks. It, and that was a matter of weeks. Yeah. And then, of course, treatment for COVID changed, yeah. where instead of ventilators, they would turn people on their stomachs. They, yeah. they, they started handling this disease difference. Yeah. That's why the contract got killed. Yeah. But the story of, you know, well, Wichita is unique in certain ways that gives us an advantage. I don't know if we talk about that enough. Nope. Like, where whatever, wherever they, Vivian makes these, you know, in Florida or Japan or wherever they make these, they don't do it as well as, as we do it here in Wichita. Yeah. Um, communities, it's not a, I don't think it's a coincidence that at, when it comes to numbers, uh, of COVID numbers yeah. uh, throughout this pandemic and, and you know hospitalizations and deaths, yeah. um, Wichita did better than almost every comparable city. Yeah. And I don't think it's a coincidence. And, yeah. it, and it's not because of an elected officials. It's not yeah. because, you know, we have, uh, we do have really good media who got the word out. Yeah. Uh, we do have people who, uh, um, you know, who, who, who did a good job, I, I guess, uh, uh, treating uh, those who were sick. It's not just the yeah. medical community. But also because people here get it. Like we are a community that not only helps each other, we don't want to get each other sick, but also we have that common sense that, you know, people took the precautions that they could to ensure that they wouldn't catch this. Yeah. And a very, I, I think, a, a lower percentage, but a, 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 a vocal as well, I think, group of folks might have been louder and political with it, yeah. but the overwhelming majority understood that this was a bad situation. What do we do to protect ourselves, our family, and our friends? Yep. And they did that. And it's not just me saying that. The numbers show that. My, my wife, I remember um, after the mask mandate here went into effect, you know, because we've heard all the rumblings and stuff like that of people being upset too. To it, right? We were upset. And, 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 our, and our city came in up front and made some mandates. And... Um, with a lot of other places around the state then following, right? Right, no, um, that, was, that was a tough call. Like, yeah, that was a was gamble. A very, it was a very tough call. I, yeah, I, had I, call some, I saw some negative comments about you at People were upset. Yeah. I got my I house believe, protested. I can't believe you did that. But but seriously though, you know, what my wife sat there and said though at the end of the day, she was shocked at the number of people, um, you know, that all of a sudden at the stores were, were just doing it, right? We don't like it. None of us likes it, but we did it. And, um, um, I, anyways, I'm I'm proud of our city. Um, that's that's why I try to do it, this. That's why I try to share the things. That's why I'm still here in the right. city. It, I love the city I'm in. And let me tell you about that mask mandate meeting. Yeah. So I have very little authority in our system of government. Uh, pretty much, the mayor is an at-large 
city council member. Like mo I have most of the same authorities a city council member has, yep. and a few additional um, uh, not really authorities but responsibilities. But you got a big office. My office is, is all right. I mean, does that doesn't have any <laughs> windows, but. But uh, and what I mean is, unlike you know, uh, mayors in other cities and other states, I can't I can't just do a mask mandate because yep. I signed one. Yep. You have to get a vote and consensus of the yep. council. Uh, so it, it, one of the things I did have was the ability to call an emergency meeting. Uh, m the mayor can call an emergency meeting uh, within two hours notice. And yep. when we saw there was the medical community was saying we have to do this now mm -hmm. because if you screw this up, you, there's really no turning back. Once yep. the virus is out, it's out. And then. Um, at our local uh, uh, folks uh, over the county, they, they wanted to hold off a little bit. Yeah. So we had a huge gathering, 4th of July. We called the meeting on the 3rd. Yeah. Everyone hated me for that. And then it wasn't really, I, I think, the fact that we had a meeting or the fact that we had a vote on this. It was the medical community who that morning, I came in here and thought, we're just gonna have to debate this and see where the chips lay. And I got a, a text message from a doctor from Wesley, who was, uh, you know, and I asked me about it, and I said, well, could you testify? Could you come and just tell us some of your experience, um, just so we have someone who's medical there to, to give us a, a professional opinion? And she said, well, I got a few other people who would be interested. Is it okay uh, if, if they talk to you? Like, yes. And so we had the best doctors in the entire city, the people who work every day with people with who are fighting COVID, um, giving us that hands-on, perspective of what we're actually facing and what's going on and answer the questions that at that time were common questions uh, of the council so that we could actually do what needed to be done in order to protect protect our city to the best that we could. Yeah. And then you're right, other cities actually followed suit, which was interesting. And then we learned later, um, I think it was Visit Wichita who presented this data, their job is to kind of make uh, Wichita like a regional attraction for people to come in and, and pretty much spend money and take pictures, have good memories, and leave, um, their data showed that uh, people were more likely to visit a city with a mask mandate than without one, yep. like by like 70%, like it was yep. high. And that mask mandate, and then people's willingness to actually, okay, I don't like it, but I'm going to protect myself and those around me by wearing this mask during that time, that actually is part of what kept our economy afloat because it empowered people to actually go out and be able to go to the supermarket and feel a, a level of protection. Uh, in other cities, other cities, the data shows that didn't do that, they actually lost out on that economic, uh, um, uh, that, that economic, uh, uh, I guess, uh, activity. And if you look at, I think it's North Dakota, um, I think it's North Dakota, maybe South Dakota, one of them, one of the Dakotas, well, the governor really didn't do anything. Yep. Uh, if you take the amount of activity that happened, like the bars, the restaurants, the stores, and you kind of scale it, because yeah. we're a bigger population, uh, people with mask mandates, cities like ours, did better than those who did nothing because people actually had faith in going out and spending money and to not just buy everything off Amazon, because they knew that people were keeping each other safe. The city, I think, was really good about um, going in and trying to be as creative as they could with businesses, yet keeping the health of the city in play. And um, we actually won a company because of that. Oh, really? Yeah, which is great. Like, I don't. By the way, I don't have any Congrats. awards. No, like, I don't have any awards on a wall. Like, I joke. Where all I like yeah. is usually people give you plaques yeah. and so on. So I never won any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but we did win a company off these policies. And I'll really? tell you, uh, uh, in one of my uh, conversations with it was um, Nova, uh, Nova Coast, yes. uh, a, um, uh, was a cybersecurity company. Uh -huh. So I got to meet with their leadership team. Yeah. And you know, my job is to brag about Wichita, yeah. talk about Wichita. Yeah. They were actually, because they're in, they're in London, yeah. they're in California, they're, they're all and down there in Wichita. Yeah. Well, the sell was that the other places they were, their COVID policy during this time really was more based on politics than it was based on data. Yep. So like in some places it was really shut everything down yep. type policy or wide open, now everyone's getting sick yep. type policy. And yep. they actually watched how we navigated through, yep. kind of made both sides unhappy. Some people yep. wanted nothing to happen. Some people wanted way more to happen and we were, 
focusing on the data, focusing on a problem and addressing that and being agile enough to make adjustments as needed that this company, when they were thinking about other places to go, they asked about that in our private meeting. They picked up on that and they said, so yeah, you know, it's, it's not about partisanship here. It's about problems here. It's how do we get through the problem? Uh, and we could talk about, I don't know, snappy punchlines that, you know, talking points later, but that's how we address this, uh, which, and, and they're here. And they're here now. Like they, yeah. you know, like I said, we're like, like I rather win, you know, do smart policy stuff instead of yeah. winning a policy competition. Instead, you wind up winning jobs. You wind up winning opportunities oh, yeah, uh, for your city. And that was one of them. And it was because we were, and it's flying from the seat of our pants, right? But just yeah. doing, you know, having that process down, that muscle memory. Uh, okay, what's the problem? How do we address it? How do we stay grounded uh, with, you know, w- w- with logic, with data, and with uh, stuff that actually works? Well, I think that's that, that's how you keep that's how you work with both sides um, when you talk politics. Um, you know, like you said, it's it's you know, we both didn't get exactly what we want, but we both got part of what we want and what we need, and it all it all works out. So let me ask you because I know time um, we're limited because you have to be there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A whole bunch of angry emails. People are mad about trash being out there. By the way, my life's getting back to normal now because you mentioned social media. Yeah. I know it's getting back to normal because I'm usually now I'm like getting stuff on my threads about, Mayor, it's Sunday. It's gorgeous out, and there's trash by the keeper. Why aren't you out here picking up this trash? I myself will never pick up trash, but you should come out here pick up the trash. And like I'm getting those type of comments, which means like it feels better. Like, well, yeah, I'm also annoyed. Like, dude, it's a Sunday. We had to cut $4 million out of our last budget. What do you think we cut? But then the other part is, like, at least it's not a awful, the type of messages I got before yeah. where it was, you know, people who had to leave the workforce because yeah. kids were out of school. You know, and we thought we could get over this summer. Remember when we thought COVID would be over in the summer? It was, right? It, right, that's what we were told. Summer 2021. Well, yes, but it was, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, you know, it's about the, some of the stuff I got. It, 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 I think people know that as mayor. I wasn't. Yeah. There's nothing you can do to like kind of. I can't legislate a disease, yeah. right? But because one of the things I can do is have that two way communication. Yeah. Actually, let people know they're being heard. And some of those stories were just really hard. Yeah. And um, of people economically getting through this. People who had personal, like as you mentioned, people. We all know someone who who had COVID or yeah. uh, had COVID really bad uh sometimes we have deadly reactions to yeah. it um i went from those conversations to i think the, these talking lighter conversations trash, talking about right. trash yeah. which is a problem sure we'll get yeah. to it yes i get the neighbor's yeah. lawn is very tall and it's annoying yeah. but yeah so i mean i kind of joke where i think that's an indication that people are starting to feel better we're starting to get kind back of our, normal yeah our swagger back a little bit yeah but two things i want to talk about and i don't think people talk about this a lot you know, it's, oh, you're mayor, it's glorious. We were having a conversation prior to this, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, it's glorious. <laughs> you made national news, right? Oh, yeah. Um, because death threat was made against you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we, we hear bits of this when it becomes national news, but it was interesting to, to hear that um, it happens a lot. And it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on whoever's in this seat is going to get this type of a thing. You're, um, you know, you're working for the benefit of the community. You're working for the benefit of the city. So, um, this is where you death threat me. This is where you're going to, so I'm going to, I'm going to be, you're going to, I'm kidding. Yeah. (laughs) So I got some policy I need you to fix. Right. (laughs) So we don't want you to get <laughs> find yourself in a Something situation happened. where your health is at risk. By the way, sign this. Um, but no, I mean, tell me about that. I mean, because you know, what was your perception before, and 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 how, how is that coming into that now? You and your family, because it's not just you. This is your family. This is this is the people around you when this does. So so to to help our city, um, it's not just a paycheck. Um, it's got to be a passion to sit there and do it. Yeah, so, I mean, there's a few things with this. One, like, I didn't think I was going to run for mayor. When I did run, I ran because I thought that um, I got in a race late, ran because I thought, like, well, we deserve, Wichita deserves a, um, uh, someone who could put out an alternative vision, right? Yeah. Uh, and 
uh, give people a choice. And then, you know, we made it through the primary, we made it through to the end, we won. Um, and uh, there is a level, and, and I am, I'm an experienced lawmaker uh, from Topeka. It, you know, as a legislator, I've gotten a lot done, like bills become law. Uh, so I feel like I, I have that experience to navigate processes and, and also to is a very toxic environment, um, political environment. Uh, yeah, so I felt like, all right, getting into this, it won't be that different, right? Like, you know, local level, you're focused more on problems and partisanship. Yeah. The, um, I knew the decisions we had to make were going to be unpopular, but also it's tough to take into account, I guess, the fear of the moment the um, uh, the that last year we had a very contentious political environment. The us versus them, combined with fear, combined with economic stress, combined with you know the other stuff that we're going through, uh, misinformation out there. Um, it was interesting because I signed up to be a uh, I guess the. Uh, to to be some symbolically like a symbol of, of government right like yeah. so i get it you're frustrated i'm responsive you tag me on social media i'll, I'll respond back um you can call me uh my, my cell number's out there because uh, yeah. i was a legislator gave my cell number to everyone um so when it comes to kind of the more negative stuff uh, it caught me off guard a little bit uh because um because i didn't think it would get as kind of as, as contentious as it did, yeah. yeah. But also I have to take a step back and understand, and my wife is incredibly smart, uh, she's working on her doctorate, and she's very good at helping me understand that, you know, they call it going to the balcony. Like you're in your emotion, your emotional state, you're like, wow, what's, wow, that's, I, I'm re responding, I'm re reacting instead of responding, and yeah. then I have someone who can say, well, look at it this way, this person is very upset, very scared, and. You're, you are now in a position where uh, you can provide some comfort by letting them know that, that they are heard. Yeah. And so that's, uh, I signed up for that. Now when it comes to the stuff where I, I think, it, and usually people are pretty mean until they realize like you're listening. Yeah. Uh, where, Mayor, I hate you, blah, 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 yeah. and then I'll respond back like. Oh, wait a minute. Like, hey, God bless. And usually when people know like at that moment you have you have the mayor's attention. Anything you want to say, like I will listen to you. Um, some people, you know, they, they take that moment to, to be hateful and that's just because they think that's what this is about is yelling at elected officials. Some people actually kind of turn a little bit and right. you can have a decent conversation, a decent dialogue. Uh, so I'll tell you, I had a call from a mother um, who was, um, kid was at home learning at home and she was very upset and she knows that I don't work for the school board, but, um, you know, supportive policies that protect our kids from COVID. And she called me and she was upset. And I remember answering the call and um, I told her a story, like at the end of what she said, I said, you know, yesterday I came home early for work. I walked into my guest room and my one-year-old who's doing first grade on a laptop uh, was laying on the floor, his laptop with his arm in his, in his elbow crying because he couldn't understand the math problem. And I knew that if he was in school, there would be a para. There would be so, someone there who can help him. And he is alone with a laptop in our guest room doing first grade, trying his best to comprehend this material. And he doesn't have all the tools. And he actually, you know, is at a point where he feels like so frustrated he's crying. And, and exactly. And that's, and as a parent, you want to protect people from that? Yeah. Or our kids and I remember her and I had a moment where she because she was very angry at me for the situation and I I didn't know what else to tell her like to deflect or talk about the divisions in government or what like oh that's them not me I just connected with her like I know exactly what, let me tell you what happened to me and we were just both sad on the phone and yeah. so I think sometimes these interactions are good because even if you can't solve the problem, I kind of signed up to ensure that I will listen to problems and do my best. And when it comes to the death threats, when it comes to yeah. the stuff that um, winds up with, ends up with a cruiser in front of my house for weeks uh, to ensure that you know my family's safe, um, 
That's a different story. That's interesting, I guess, because it's one of those where I know you sign up to take, to take uh, heat for stuff that happens, and I'm I'm all for that. Uh, I'm the most death threatened mayor in Wichita's history. Uh, it's a uh, but it's also, you know, my wife works for our church. We have a, a very strong um, faith uh, where there are moments where you think, like, I, I <laughs> might not be handling this perfectly, but I think I'm doing better than someone else would be doing. Yeah. Um, so we've done a really good job protecting our kids from seeing stuff. Um, right. When we had a protest at our house, we tried to change the tone after the mass uh, by putting out a cooler full of water uh, and a sign. We took a yard sign and put it up inside out and Chelsea, yeah. welcome to our house. Um, and we put it out there and, and frankly, the the protest stayed on the side of our house. They- um, Respectful. Yeah, they, they were. Yeah. Um, they, uh, someone wrote a note, thanks for the water. Uh, it, and it's one of those like, we're in this together and that wasn't planned it was me going out buying firework at the last moment saying oh i got it it's really hot i got to get home to my anti-protest um yeah. and realizing like i bet they're gonna be hot too while i'm at because when you're mirror wichita i gotta buy fireworks in wichita yeah so while i'm in the parking lot of dylan's i just went and grabbed some water and called chelsea on the way hey can we get the can we get the cooler so anyways um the uh the, so there's negativity there's concern and then there's the stuff that's over the top just got this call, I got this weird message, can you check this guy out, what do yep. you think of this? Um, and a lot of the threats are just angry folks, and some of them, one of them what was seemed to be credi- credible, one of them uh, yeah. what was it seemed to be better planned out an actual plot with someone with a, I think, a history of violence. So Most people just want to be heard, and sometimes their approach to trying to be heard is not probably the best approach that they should set their own take. Well, it, but, that, yeah. but, that's, but that's most angry people in general, right? Well, especially it, people who think that you're not going to listen to them. Yeah. Like, that's the difference, I think, is there are people who will, I, I think, react angrily to people who they think, like, I can't get their attention any yeah. other way. I have to, like, draw blood pretty much, like, you yeah. know, uh, with, with words. Then, But usually, and I, I don't... The mayor idea, like to me, and this sounds stupid. I'm gonna first preface with this sounds stupid. When I met Brewer, Mayor yeah. Brewer, years ago, yeah, uh, when I was just getting into politics, and it was in this office, yeah. and this desk was over there, and I sat here, and I was dressed up, and I wanted just to pick his brain about this stuff because I heard he was a nice guy. And he made a comment of like, you know, I'm just like everyone else. I just have a different job. And I was like, that sounds stupid. Like, you're the freaking mayor. Like, you kidding me? And then, like, in this job, like, I also, for some reason, completely understand where, like, I don't know why people would recognize me and want to talk to me. I don't know why, like, it's just, to me, it's a job. But also, you know, you got to be there. um, Not let it get to your head. You got to stay humble. You got to realize that service work is part-time. That, uh, or part-time, which means it's short-lived, I guess, is a better way to do it. It's a full-time job, but it's short-lived. It's like doing any other service like peace corps or there's usually a time on it and once you're ready once you've done all you can i guess to give back um and your time's up like you gracefully leave can you talk to the rest of our politicians yeah <laughs> <laughs> master class on what you should do <laughs> yeah you know it's funny the um not everyone sees it the same um some people see that we're scoring points against each other they see yeah. it like yeah, you know, and and I think the last few years, particularly under the last president, um, social media seemed less of a way to to communicate and connect, and I think more of a way to attack, attack and degrade. Yeah. And and I remember because I was elected before the last president was, and I'm not knocking his policies, but yeah. he was, regardless of what side you were on, he, yeah. he, he uses his Twitter aggressively. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes you punch down, but sometimes he was punching down against people who didn't have the same podium to, to fight back. Yeah. And um, I remember seeing this transition where I would use my Twitter to kind of promote stuff. Yeah. And then seeing this transition where younger politicos would be more mean, like more just in their comments. Angry. Yeah, in yeah. interactions total yeah. and thinking like, oh no, it's switching. They're mimicking him. Yeah. And uh, so now I think 
hopefully we can get back to dialogue. Yeah. We can get back to what social media can actually be used for, which is social uh, um, a, a social community. Well, and, and just a, a different method to 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 talk. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give kudos to you, and I'm gonna give kudos to even the city council and all of that. Um, even them. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that sounds horrible. The, uh, no, I mean, I mean, no, no, that sounds about right. I'm just kidding. I love the city council. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get phone calls about no. this. Okay. <laughs> so his Twitter address. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's... going to be like, I didn't mean that. I was just kidding. But Everybody here is... Everybody here is very easy to communicate with for the most part. Um, anytime I've ever wanted to reach out, either just to voice a voice a thought, voice a concern, ask a question, I'm nobody special. Um, the communication has always been there, um, and and I just find that um, big because I talk to other people in other communities, and that's just not the case. Um, and I, I hope that continues. I hope that continues more. I hope. Um, people who become councilmen and councilwomen um, realize that it's a, it's a, it's a privilege. Um, you're not representing you; you're representing the people. Um, it's a huge privilege. You're yeah, exactly right. And you know, and it's a huge it, responsibility because people put what they yeah. want uh, and of themselves onto you. Well, and, and that it's not it's just party. I mean, I'm, I'm a Wichita. What's best for me in Wichita? Right. Sometimes that leans this way, and sometimes that leans that way. And uh, I do feel that in, in our community, I, I, I do feel that we've got a little bit more of that um, in the way the politics look. You know, I, but... We have a chance to be more po- focused, I think, on actual issues than on partisanship i mean yeah. you always got the ones that are they're already in a camp they're yeah. the they're like my dad he's a patriots fan yeah like there's I'm nothing sorry. you can say that's bad about the Patriots. <laughs> i know right like no to him any, anything that says <laughs> belichick is is unethical to him is fake news yeah you got those but i think the overwhelming majority of people if you if you get out of the um that framework of a partisan talking point and i yeah. joke that like hey talking points are like pickup lines they're funny they're snappy you're never gonna, you're not building relationships with pickup lines, yeah. right? Like, it's about values. Like, yeah. what, and when I talk to folks here, um, it's about what, what's the goal? It's usually yeah. a shared goal. And the value, uh, values of partisanship is more, I think, a measurement of values. Yeah. Like, you know, people who lean, I think, more left are uh, lean towards um, opportunity for which it ends is given through access to job training and education. Yep. And then people who are more right, like opportunity for which it ends is better access through, um, through, through, through allowing more resources for job creators. Yep. And it's that balance of, you, we probably both are right. Yep. And it's that, well, how do we come up with a policy that actually gets to our shared vision, which is opportunities for more which attends. Yeah. And I'll tell you, people in elected office, and I don't know a whole lot, but I definitely know this because I've been in elected office, I've been around yeah. these folks, people who are in it for themselves, they don't last. Because yeah. this is not a job, this isn't Hollywood for nerds. Like this is yeah. this is one of those where you get people who call you by the time to get through to you, some of them they're having a the worst day, yeah. and they need help, and you have to work. And it is not a glamorous, uh, uh, gig, it's not what you see on television. And the yeah. people who get elected who think of that, um, they wind up leaving. They get yeah. burnt out. And so, but the good thing is, regardless of your politics, the people who usually get jobs like this, yeah. who get elected, they're the type of people who really want to serve. Like yeah. they're the type who they they picked a side. Uh, so they ran and, and they, they kind of ended the party because they picked a side, but also they're really into helping people. Yeah. Those are the ones who get into positions in which they can be, be actual helpful to others so final question wichita future wichita right you're in a you're in a role that helps to shape where we go and coming out of covid um what do you want to see for wichita and i know that's probably a big thing it is but really i think it sums it up somewhat in the word of opportunity and and i'll describe it right because that sounds like a talking point like uh but um so Wichita, we no longer need to have that mindset of like good enough, in my opinion. Like I think that there is a 
mindset of, you know, uh, we don't deserve some of the, the same, um, the same, I guess, life, um, quality of life type stuff or jobs or this or that that some other communities deserve. Yeah. Everyone talks about Tulsa. Like, I'm yeah. in mayor of Wichita. I'm never taking my kids to Tulsa. Like, no, like, I got some pride. Like, I'm sure it's a great, I'm sure it's amazing, you know, the whatever, the whatever place, thing so. they got going on down there that everyone tells me I need to take my kids to. Yeah. Sure, but you know what? I'm really focused on, um, on, on having those same opportunities here. Yeah. And uh, so I think that when it comes to, you know, people, when it, we need to take a page out of the past when, in the 80s, when Wichita's economy was growing at twice the national average. Yeah. Uh, when we were growing as a state, as a city, uh, when it, it, and know that you know when we were talked about in the same level that some of the biggest cities in our region are talked about, yeah. know that like we've done it before and we can do it again and we need to be thinking that you know why not why not get the the uh, uh, big businesses here why not get um, you know have a uh, world class educational opportunities here why not get to uh, where where I think we should be is and yeah. that's in those regional conversations now to do that we have to We have to be inclusive of different ideas and be adaptable to changes in our economy Our economy is changing right now at a faster pace than ever has yeah. and we have no idea getting this new COVID economy economy the entire world changed I doubt zoom's going away uh, but we do know that we need more child care yeah. we do know that two million women seceded from from the uh, uh, workforce nationally, that's half our workforce. And now we need more childcare because they can't come back to work unless, you know, uh, they have it. right. Uh, uh, we do know that folks who are 55 and older who left during COVID, 27% of them are coming back. Yep. So we do know not only do we have more and different job opportunities, uh, but also uh, we have um, challenges where uh, we have to get people trained. We have to ensure that as the economy uh, changes, that they have opportunities to change with the economy to get more credentialing, uh, rather stackable credentialing, uh, get people prepared for the fact that this upcoming change in the economy, you're likely to have six different careers, yep. unlike what our parents had, uh, and but able to be versatile or agile enough in our new economy, in our new city in which we could take advantage of uh, new trends, new economic trends that build upon what we do well already, and that our workforce doesn't have to leave uh, and follow the jobs. And instead, if they choose to stay, they can easily get credentialed, uh, stackable credentials for that next opportunity here. Yep. And if we do that well, uh, then our kids don't have to leave. Yep. You know, my son, I want him to be a doctor, by the way. Um, like, <laughs> I want my oldest one to be a doctor, but he has a lot of problems with authority and questioning things and putting together arguments. And my wife says he's too much like me. So uh, the reality is like- Politician. Yeah, he might be, well, he better not be. He might be like a lawyer or something, I don't know. But like, you know, he's very good with logic games. He's very, you know, he's like eight. Um, but um, but anyways, uh, let's say he wanted to utilize what what I see as his mother's intelligence, even though yeah. my, some of my personality, which is a bad thing, uh, for, for uh, cybersecurity. Yeah. Well, now, if I'm doing my job and people who come after me are doing our job, he doesn't have to go to California to go work for a major cybersecurity uh, firm because we are bringing those opportunities here in Wichita. If the economy is changing to the point where more online type work is, is available, you don't have to move to New York to work for a Fortune 500 company if I can reach out and say, you should be hiring our folks here yep. and we're going to put in some incredible internet access uh, in Wichita. You should hire our folks. We have the old library that we're gonna utilize as a shared workspace or Groover Labs as a shared workspace. Uh, we're gonna have you know CEO from this place come in. Tell us what is your, your company culture and we're gonna teach a class at it at one of our universities yeah. so that our people have an edge over anywhere else you're looking for as far as employees. Because yeah. uh, we're gonna adapt our stuff to, be, to work around what you're looking for in employees. And if we can be that type of forward thinking and not stuck. And what I mean by stuck is kind of stuck in this old way, stuck in our viewpoint. Oh, this has always worked in the same recipe. Yep. And yep. innovation doesn't mean throwing all that away. Like innovation isn't becoming the next Austin. Innovation is becoming the next Wichita. It's becoming, what do we do really well? What's an opportunity and how do we use that opportunity to build upon what, what we do really well? 
We build planes better than anyone in the entire world. And you know what else we do that we just found out? Is we build ventilators better than anyone in the entire world. And I'll tell you, it's probably some other stuff out there that we can do better uh, yeah. than other uh, areas. And my job is to try to facilitate uh, those opportunities uh, because they highlight uh, what we have here as, as a city as far as uh, resources. That was very long, sorry about all that. No, I loved it. Um, I appreciate the time that you've spent to sit there and do this with me um, because I don't think enough people get a chance to sit there and, and you know, um, I mean, I know that this is partial politics because we're talking about Wichita and the stuff that's going on, but. Um, well, just, politics is the science that. of working with people. Okay. So it's not always negative. So, so you know, so people say stuff every like time that. I'm with him. Every time See? I try to make a comment, he has to. I know you're me. a politician, <laughs> but like, just keep it like, yeah, politics. You know, it's kind no. of like an applied social science. I think just Man. not to knee jerk, but yes. No, I do. I, I appreciate the time you spent doing this because uh, you know I hope I hope we do it again. Um, I hope here, you know, in the next year or so, we you know there's a follow up conversation and there's talk about. Here's all the other stuff that Wichita has been able to do, because rather than making excuses and rather than than um, it being more of the same, you know, the city keeps moving forward like it has. And I've seen a lot of movement forward, and I expect to see more movement forward. And uh, um, I appreciate you being in office. Of course. Well, so. this is our moment, and we're, we have momentum now, and we need to think bold, and we need to take risks and take chances and the reality is that's a throwback to that that entrepreneur culture that we've been known for and let's get away from kind of those historical uh you know a company named coleman pizza Hut, and let's start making new ones you know Absolutely. let's start taking uh taking uh, i guess uh, uh more of a forward step and See, see what comes out of it. So I, I enjoy you. this. I would love to chat with you in the future. You are saving me from having to get to my emails. That's great. I'm telling you. So. Well, and and make sure you go watch the cruising with Kirk. Um, we're going to be having a more just sort of a fun a fun deal on that. So um, Mayor Whipple, thank you for all of the all of those of you that are watching. I uh, appreciate you spending time with us on Real Conversations with Kirk. Uh, like us on Facebook and YouTube and visit us at wichitahometeam.com. Talk to you next time.